G'day everybody and welcome back to another Scowdown session. This time welcoming Eagles forwards coach Matty Knights into the studio for a chat. Nighter, how are you mate? Good Scowie, yeah, good to be here mate. Yeah, good, um, great to have you. The last four weeks ends a bit of a block of pretty competitive footy for the, for the club. Um, how have you seen it? Yeah, it does. I mean, I think it started with the Sydney game where we, at three quarter time, we were there to win that game. Like we were kicking with probably two or three gold breeze at Mount Barker. Um, we probably had Sydney where we wanted them. They outplayed us in the last quarter. And then I guess out of that come a little bit more belief and confidence in the way we were playing, um, which resulted in Richmond and, and Fremantle, which were great, great victories, both good in their own right. And then um, Gold Coast, I thought we were a little bit off the Gold Coast game. I thought we could have played much better um, in that game in a lot of areas. And then on the weekend, we kept grinding. You know, we, we I think Essendon were out in front for most of it. Um, but we managed to get the crowd involved. We got some good inside 50s late and, you know, our forwards started to look real dangerous yep. as the night went on. So, yeah, it's been better, Sco, and, um, you know, no bigger challenge than the reigning Premier this week. Yeah, brilliant. I'm looking forward to watching it. Um, Jake Waterman, former teammate of mine, You've got to speak about him second in the Coleman. And I know the injury stuff and the concussion. We'll probably leave that. just want to talk about his footy. Yeah. Must have been, you know, as his line coach, um, been impressive to watch him go about it. What, what do you see as the reason he's taken a big leap, seemingly in the in the last sort of start start of the year? Yeah, good question. I, I I love firstly I love the fact that when you know at the start of the year Oscar was appointed captain um, of the club, and how this relates to Oscar is a little bit linked to Jake. Is that you know we felt Oscar was going to be he's going to have a big role in the forward line, plus be one of the leaders of the club with Liam Duggan, and we said well. Listen, as a forward line group, let's let's have multiple leaders in that group, um, and obviously Jake's been one of the ones that have, have really stepped up in in that space. And then once Oscar got injured, um, he's basically been the guy that you know with with Darling and Cripps there that is the experience, and he's been the voice. Um, mm. He's the one that gets the boys in before the game and has a chat to them, and when they're out in the ground, he has the last word. And I think he's really taken on that, and I think having to look out for others and those around him has ha- actually helped his football. It's actually taken the focus of maybe away from goals and this and that. So he's, he's been able to impact the game in pressure stakes. He's been marking the ball really well in a contest and then getting his, getting his reward with goals. So yeah. I, I relate his form to not only his hard work on the track, but the, his leadership and maturity has really grown as a person. And I think that's starting to reflect on the mm. grass. That's good to hear because people just see the goals and they think, oh, he's just kicking lots of goals. He's yeah. just getting on the end of them. But yeah. the leadership element has been big for him. Um, I was just reflecting on the coaching group and, and you know, Simo and, and yourself, uh, Jared Schofield. There's quite a bit of uh, head coaching experience in, in the group. Have you, I don't know, you know, assistant now, but being able to, to give Simo assistance in that sort of role, feedback and work together, given you've been in, in a similar role and led a team, you've been able to do that a bit since you've been at the club? Yeah, I think it is. I think one, one thing you know, being a head coach, you know the challenges of being a head coach and what comes with the day-to-day and the week-to-week and how results go. So I certainly know the right time to approach Simo and have a word to him. And, and when the other times when I know he's super busy and you know he's going hard, I tend to just leave that. But I think having spent 10 years with Chris Scott, um, I was also helped that element of being you know, an assistant you know, and yes. my time at Geelong was unbelievable. I, you know, I was lucky enough to work with great coaches and great players and um, being able to, in, I guess, impose some of that experience, you know, with the forward group at the moment is something I'm really enjoying, um, doing a little bit of the Eagles ball as well. So, you know, I'm just wrapped at the moment. I'm enjoying coaching, you know, Jack Williams as much as I am Jack Darling um, and mm. both at different spectrums of their career and, um you know, one's a you know, promising young player who's got brilliant craft he's, and he's getting better and better. And then you've got Darling who started the year slowly, had a bit, the body wasn't quite there, but just to see him compete and, and go hard the last three or four weeks has been a really good tonic for us. Yeah, Jack Darling, his game, played with him for a long time. It's based off the contest and pressure, isn't it? He's not, it's not based, same as Jake, it's not based on the end result of kicking goals. That's it's right. Work rate and second and third efforts. And it looks like you mentioned, you know, it's come along well over this this really competitive block. Yeah, it has. I mean, it's even good to see him up the ground at half back and getting the odd mark and then set mark and, and looking to find someone with his short kick or getting involved in a handball chain in the in the contest part of the ground in the middle. But uh, just as a backman, <laughs> just be careful getting those key forwards too high up the ground. You get them in the back fifth, they start losing a few functions. You think it looks all right though? Do you think Brass and McGovern just doing that down there? That's fine. But <laughs> yeah. no, it's, it's I suppose where it, it's good to see him up the ground helping, but. Um, part of AFL these days, it's become like a, 
the AFL has become, whether we like it or not, a bit like a rolling mall or a cage match and you just got to get up the ground and support. And, and then part of the challenge as a forward is to get back and equalise the numbers. So when we do go forward, we actually can get a contest and get a look at its go. So Jack and um, Jack Darling and Jake Waterman have been doing that really admirably this year. And, you know, and it's Jack Williams and Ryan Marrick, if they can follow the lead of those two senior guys, you know, I think it helps their careers to develop and be better players. Yeah, great. Um, lots of questions coming in from our audience, Nida. So we're going to get to some of those if that's all right. Barb White sends one in and says, what is the plan for the forward line this week with Jake getting injured and going down? Yeah, that's a, that's a real quandary, that one, because he's been, he's been not only the contested mark element and the goals, he's just been so hard to play on because he's running 14 k's a game, uh, yeah. 14 kilometres a game, so he's a difficult matchup um, for bigger guys um, that, don't, that really like to sit back. So um, Barbie's going to be a difficult replacement. Um, but Ryan Marrick missed last week um, yep. with illness, so he'll come back into the into the 22. So he's obviously not going to play the exact same role as, as Jake. And then Darling and, and Jack Williams will have to probably step up and do a bit more of that stuff as well. Yep, good. Eagle Talk, uh, this one is from the boys over there. What's the outlook for Jack Williams' future? You've just mentioned him. Are they looking to prioritise him more as a stay-at-home forward or do the forward-ruck hybrid combo? Well, he's certainly putting his hand up to do the, the forward-ruck combo. Um, mm. The way he's playing his footy, he's a different type of ruckman to Bailey's a jumper, um, Bailey Williams, but Jack's more a craft ruckman um, with his, his quick feet and his body positioning. So um, it was just nice to see him, you know, go against Goldstein at times the other night and do a good job for us. Um, I guess with when Flinney comes back into the team, it then becomes a match committee decision on how we structure the three of them. Because yep. um, obviously Flinney was showing a fair bit in his early days with us yeah. before he got injured. So... But, you know, if Jack can keep his spot and, and keep taking that opportunity, he's going to be hard to move out of the team. And, you know, he's a, in the build we're in, he's a, he's a really good player for us. He, uh, he does a couple of things each game that catches the eye. Like, uh, looks really agile, athletic for his size. He's a big boy. Um, but he's still developing as that key forward ruckman. But you can just say there, I'm sure you say it better than I do, that he's, just got, he's got real potential, doesn't he? He has, mate. He's, and he's probably still growing into his body. I think he's probably got another five or six kilos to put on that frame. And you know what it's like. Your, your body grows over time with, in the weight room and yeah. with the training program. So, you know, he'll, as a young man, he'll naturally get bigger and stronger. Um, and even on the weekend, he had a, like a, a little subtle deft kick into Noah Long inside 50. And, you know, that's not always... You don't always see that with big guys, you know? Yeah. Not that I have any issue with big guys and their skill level because I'm, uh, I'm five foot eight or five foot nine, so I'm not going to argue too much <laughs> there. But, um, no, it's just good to see him make those type of plays and back himself in. Yeah, he changed it late, didn't he? As yeah. he was dropping the ball, really like that stuff. Miguel Sanchez asks, uh, are you trying to use Liam Ryan a bit differently now after his serious hamstring injury? Yeah, it's a good question with Liam because it's... Liam obviously can be a, a difficult matchup when he's deep forward but then also at times in the game it can be a bit of st you can be starved down there at times if we're not getting the ball inside 50 so you've got to work out whether to play him sort of high up the ground or deep just to sort of get him involved in the game and I had a conversation with Liam today he's now played two waffle games and two AFL games and I think it's the time for him now to you know to step up his workload both on the training track and in match day and yes. you know particularly with the absence of Jake and Noah Long this week um, we really need Liam to step up and, and get into that high level of play that we're used to. Yeah, because he's, he's such a dangerous player, but you'd have to also get the confidence back in the body. Like He missed a lot of footy there, 12 months of footy effectively. So you're yeah, hoping he sort of makes that leap coming forward. That's great. Brett O'Neill asks, Archer Reid has played a couple of games now after an injury interrupted start to his Eagles career. What attributes have you seen that he could make it at the top level? Yeah, Archer's, I think he's the tallest player on our list. So Is he? Yeah, as in height-wise. So he's, he's a huge man. And he's probably, there's a little bit of that going around the league at the moment with, the, you know, the McKays, you yep. know, Hipwood, Danaher. The Kings. Yeah, the Kings, like those huge key position players. and Maybe every position has grown. I mean, the mids of today are... Yeah. a difference that we were 20 years ago so naturally the forwards are getting bigger you would bigger. want to be matched up with like Paddy <laughs> Cripps and I look, at, I look at these guys these forwards and I'm, I was 195 exactly not a small defender but against King you're almost given 10 centimetres away so I'm like go yeah. for it fellas have the best time yeah so Archer's probably the, linking to that his height and his reach is going to be really 
you know, a big thing in the AFL, you know, because he's so, so tall. Um, and I think as he plays football and gets more waffle games, his, his grass work or his on the ground stuff will get better and better. And yep. I think he's probably another one that could potentially play forward and ruck um, with his height. So, yeah, he's a promising young man and um, just got to ply his trade at the waffle now and, yes. and get better and better. It's exciting. Sounding good. Jonathan Dawson sends this one across. Did you go overseas to help your coaching development during the summer nighter? No, I didn't, mate. I've been uh, actually. I've had a. I've got a daughter who is playing basketball in America at university. So I went over there a couple of years ago and visited her. And um, I've been to sort of England and Europe a few times on study trips to soccer clubs and um, NFL teams. So I've done a little bit of that in the past, but not this past summer. Mm. Uh, Simo went to New York. I think he had a little trip over there and visited yeah, to, a couple yeah. little places. And had I think to look over, look look after Sam Mitchell. Yeah, so. yeah. And Scoey, I think Sco went over and um, spent a bit of time at different clubs as well. But I. Uh, I had a summer in Geelong, mate, in Ocean Grove, and uh, Brilliant. did a bit of water work and tried to surf, but didn't, didn't, wasn't that successful at <laughs> either. <laughs> That's good. Well done, mate. Uh, appreciate it. That brings us to the end of the, uh, the showdown for this week. Massive match to come this weekend against the Pies at Marvel on Sunday. All the best, Nola. Thanks, Scott. Cheers, mate.